and gentlemen, Your Excellency, it's a great honor for us to be here and actually to be shared one of the good practices born in pre-accessional countries to be shared with the EU28. So thank you very much for that. And usually my surprise and enter <coughs> is ruined, but I will try to <coughs> go again back. Actually, I was prepared to speak after the bank, but now being before the bank, so please, Peter, support what I'm sharing. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm coming from the simple world of education, and you know, we people in education, how we see actually our, our mind is almost very enthusiastic, and we see like babies born, and there is a simple way up. But then we are living nowadays in the very complex world, and actually it's not simple anymore. It's not just way up, but there is a lot of obstacles, and what we faced up with <coughs> is actually that our citizens in the accession region are not able to face with all these things. And just to quote, the Thomas Jefferson said, every generation need a new revolution. What we find out, and actually it's also shared with the economists, that the revolution of the current generation is entrepreneurial. And what we saw in the region is very applicable for us, that huh, what we need. We need to learn how to apply more brain power, how to think in more creative ways, and actually how to raise the productivity and solve social problems that we can compete in the global economy. And the title which Peter has, Transition Stocks in the Transition, I'm 48. And you know this fashionable word of transition started when I was in the primary school. And I am in transition all my life. So, I'm young actually, you know. So, why CECIL is born? Actually, the CECIL is the first institutional development born through the very important EU document called Small Business Act for Europe. And you can see it's born out of EU28. It's born in pre-accession. And it's actually started on the request of the eight countries for structured cooperation in 2008. Then Croatia offered to support, to coordinate all the activities, and institutional setting is actually born in 2009. And our mission is that in line with the principle one and principle eight, and you know that Small Business Act has ten principles, so two out of ten are dedicated to human capital development. If we also put that in line with the Entrepreneurship Action Plan, EU 2020 Entrepreneurship Action Plan, the first priority is to develop the entrepreneurial literate society and actually as uh, Commissioner Barroso said and the President of the Commission said, it's time to act according to thinking entrepreneurial. So this is our motto, think to act entrepreneurial. So who are the co-founders? The co-founders of the center are Croatian Ministry of Entrepreneurship, so Republic of Croatia represented by the relevant ministry and we are very proud that in Croatia we have even the ministry for dedicated to SME development, and Croatian Chamber of Economy. Why these two partners? Because actually we were thinking that from the beginning, from the step one, government and businesses need to go you know, in the same step, in the same ethos, and to cooperate. Then the CECIL board is actually international one, composed of the representatives of the eight countries. Each country from the CECIL member states, so is Albania, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Kosovo, Macedonia, um, which I forgot, Serbia and <laughs> Turkey, together with Croatia. Actually, they have each country has two representatives. One is coming from the SME relevant ministry, and it's a national SBA coordinator. What is the pre-accession country? Is the SBA coordinator the relevant person in EU member state? Is EU SME envoy? So. And the second person is coming from the Ministry of Education. It was very nice discussion. Oh, but we have two representatives per country, so what if we don't agree, you know, in the governance process? So we are practicing open method of coordination. Guys, please discuss at home. Education, economy, sit together, discuss, and then vote for the decision. And we can say it's working since 2009. If someone say it's not possible, yes, it is. It's working. Financial support, of course, you, you can have wonderful ideas, but if there is no the financial envelope for supporting the actions, actually, it's just the enthusiasm, nothing else. So, financial support is coming from the European Commission through the envelope called, you know, we are living in the world of acronyms, so EPA-MB, it stands for Instrument for Pre-Accession 
for multi-beneficiary purposes. Or to simplify, it's EU envelope for a regional cooperation of pre-accession countries. You are familiar that the uh, support EU envelopes for pre-accession countries are going in two, dif not different, but two complementary ways. One is the national envelope for each country, which is called IPA, and the second envelope is for the regional cooperation. The purpose of the regional cooperation envelope is that through modalities of regional cooperation, we are helping developments on the national level. And the additional support is coming from the Croatian national budget. And uh, allow me to use again this opportunity to thank European Commission for our support. So delegation, thank you very much. And also Croatian ministry. But we're also proud to share with you that uh, since last year, we have requests from the member states, CISL member states, to financially co contribute to our budget. So it's the first example that the countries on their own initiative want to contribute in the budget without political push. So it's not born through the Stability Pact actions. It, it is decision of the countries to contribute in the budget. So money solved. And I already shared with you some kind of the developments under the EU envelopes. What is also interesting to, to be shared with you, that the president of the board is Croatian Minister of Entrepreneurship, and also all these developments are shared within the EU SME Envoy Network, which is coordinated by a director coming from uh, DG Enterprise, Mr. Kaleha, and it's already shared that these kind of initiatives would be uh, also relevant for the EU 28. Uh, CISL is at the moment recognized as a center of excellency for entrepreneurial learning by European Commission in several big documents. So it's a guide for educators for EU 28 related to entrepreneurship education. Then um, we are subject uh, uh, to implementation of SC 2020 strategy, which is a new strategy, macro-regional strategy for uh, pre-accession countries. Then we are one of direct actions within the Danube strategy, and also we are stated as one of the actions under the new macro-regional strategy, which is just to be adopted uh, during the Greek presidency. It's Adriatic Ionian macro-regional strategy. But also in parallel, we are supported through another acronym or financial envelope, which is uh, Western Balkans Investment Framework, which is dedicated to support of infrastructural solution. And we are happy to share with you that uh, CISEL was awarded with this support among railways and hospitals and jails and roads, which is the fashion in the, in the region. I know when I'm mentioning jails, but this is where the support is coming. And we are the solely social regional infrastructural project. project. So we are currently also implementing uh, the activities under the Western Balkans Investment Framework. And with uh, great happiness, I can share with you that there is uh, the idea and all, uh, already the money is insured for building and constructing the future home of CISL in Zagreb with the preconditions and um, also willingness to serve as a future European Center of Expertise for Entrepreneurial Learning. And we are already awarded as a one of the best practices in the implementation of Small Business Act for Europe. Okay, just uh, to share with you the, the ethos of Small Business Act for Europe, all these very important principles, and of course we're talking about rules of think small first, so it's cutting the red tape and um, access to finance, because this is not, nowadays this is the burning issue, or actually how um, to operate under the single market, because it's not so easy when you are moving from, from pre-accession status, when you are operating um, within the SEFTA agreements, third agreements, and then you are moving to operate under the single market, it's a very serious issue. So two out of ten are dealing with human capital, and this is our areas of operation. And this is where the CCL actions are focused on. So, you know, the drawing is always the nicest way to explain the things. So, one of the preconditions for CCL operations are that all parties need to be involved. So, we are practicing open method of coordination in every of our actions. Uh, the key word, the magic, you know, that uh, behind the every success story, there is always a magic. Not common sense, so it's a magic. What are the magic words? Partnership and partnership and partnership. 
partnership on international level, partnership on national level between the different parts of the, of the ministries or governments and also sectors, so education on one side, economy on the other side, and then partnership on the local level. Why on the local level? Because if we go deeper in details of SMEs, there is a nice story, so SMEs go globally, then you have the story about the firm who succeed from the micro company to make a business with the United States or, or globally. Yes, it's a nice one, but it's a rare example. And it's always the subject of Hollywood movie. But in reality, the SMEs are giving the atmosphere and the, they're operating in the ethos of local environment, of local communities. And if they're growing and go internationally, usually they're making a business with the neighbors within the region. So our focus is actually, the key message is how to develop the entrepreneurial society, not just with the primary goal, just to increase the number of startups, but also to increase the number of opportunity-driven startups, which is having the element of increasing and, and fostering the competitiveness of, of our economies. And also the second line of effect, or um, the impact which we would like to, with this kind of actions to achieve, is that uh, through entrepreneurial way of thinking, we increase the general level of efficiency of all economies. And this is what the ethos is uh, behind. And if we are serious, then the focus needs to be on entrepreneurial student, no matter if it is a five, six, five years old, or as I am 48 years old, or entrepreneurial teacher and entrepreneurial school. Why? we have these three elements because usually we are witnessing in all of our pre-accession pre countries a lot of money was spent for training of teachers but if you don't take the unit of change in educational system which is educational <coughs> institution it's a waste of money the second thing is triple helix model so if we are serious with the boosting um, uh, competitiveness of our economies and to support innovation so it is not possible without uh, cooperation between universities business world and the government it sounds very easy, but it's not. <coughs> and this is uh, one of our areas of operations. So the cooperation is crucial. I would also like to share with you that actually the eight ministries from the region in 2012, they sit together around the table, they signed the Charter for Entrepreneurial Learning, and this is the first such example even for EU28. And actually, uh, the ministries from the region, they like the sentence, this sentence very much, when the right sit, people sit around the table, problems or issues become opportunities to be more diplomatic, not problems, talk about problems. So this is the basis of our operation. <sighs> At the moment, we are also um, recognized in all these documents, as I already shared with you. And we are very happy to share with you that since one and a, uh, one and a half month ago, we are recognized also by the Commission to be the official institution to monitoring the implementation of the Small Business Act in pre-accession region. Why this is important? Because Small Business Act implementation is the subject also of progress report of each country. And progress report is also giving the direction of national EU uh, envelopes for national developments. Also, we, uh, since 2009, we got three awards and we are happy and proud on them to be champions, you know, if we cannot win on the Olympic Games, but still we can be champions here. And recognition by European Parliament uh, among all the EU projects to be the most successful, let us say, and also recognition by the uh, Knowledge Economy Network, uh, which is the global network. So what, what is the methodology? Which kind of methodology we are applying in our work? Um, CICEL is not just working with independent institutions, hunting for experts. Everything needs to go in line with the whole structures. Everything needs to go in line with the Small Business Act for Europe process. So actually the key person for us is the National SBA coordinator. And we are operating uh, in the ethos of evidence-based policy making because at the end of the day, this is where the countries uh, express need for. Because they said we are lacking the evidence bases or evidences for the um, long-term policy making. So in the first phase, uh, we are working all together, eight countries' representatives, 
in the development of instruments and actually development of the most applicable shoes for each country because you know that there is no one shoes fit all. If I cannot wear the high heels, I cannot. It's hurting me. So we are trying to discuss all of us and we need to be aware. And eight countries are, have differences. Montenegro, 670,000 citizens on one side. And then you have a Turkey, more than 70 million people. And there is no the same solution. What is applicable for the country of the bigger size can kill Montenegro in implementation because they will not have enough people to support infrastructural solution. So when the instrument is developed in education, there is no fast win scenario. Because if you go on the fast win scenario in education, you're causing the earthquake. And actually everything needs to go in line with the strategic piloting, reflecting on that, correcting, and then be ready for full implementation. So we are all together, eight countries, we are piloting the instrument developed. And then if it, uh, entrepreneurial learning is defined as a key competence. If it is a key competence, then it, work, it must work universally, no matter of the size of the country, on the language, of the religion and culture. If it is universal value, it needs to work. And now I'm sharing with you, it's working. It's working and we have results. After that, the instrument is ready for full implementation. What that means concretely? That means that the instrument is handed back to the national governments and it's ready for the further development or the broader scale. So it's already agreed with the European Commission what is born through the CISL activities can be further supported through the national envelopes and we already have examples from Macedonia developing the national strategy and implementing that in the regular system. In Serbia, they are just developing that. In uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, we are all aware of the geocomplexity of the functioning in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Entrepreneurial learning is the project supported by the Euro Commu European Commission currently going on for the second generation. In uh, Montenegro, they just applied on, in the parliament the national strategy for entrepreneurial learning. In Albania, they signed the strategic partnership and who left in Kosovo, they are moving very fast. It's a consensus of, and Turkey, in Turkey we have a great support and example where the national agencies uh, for SMEs, it's COSGAP, is actually starting for the first time, it's great to, to, to follow that example, to work with the schools. So, and you need to know the fact that COSGAP is the national agency who is in charge for national SME strategy implementation. So it's a great achievement, a great experience which we have from all these countries. And actually, oops, I'm too fast. So the basic definition for our countries is even more concrete than it is for EU28. In eight system member states, they are talking about need for entrepreneurial literacy. And this entrepreneurial literacy is including the, uh, the basic understanding of economic concepts, financial literacy, and also how to think and act entrepreneurially. What are our strategic pillars of actions? So, ISCAD 1 and 2, ISCAD 3, ISCAD 5 and 6, TNI, Women Entrepreneurs. So, all these acronyms and numbers to simplify. Primary education, secondary, tertiary education, and how strategically to develop the instruments to support current um, entrepreneurs who are currently operating. Why all these lines? Because uh, currently operating SMEs, they have a big problem. They cannot wait for educational system to respond in 10 years. They need to work, operate, compete now. What they have time to wait, they have time for six months to wait for some kind of reallocation in the national budget and actions, then for training. So with TNA, we are targeting the immediate need. How, we can, how you can make the corrective actions within the national development to support SMEs currently. TNA is actually the training needs analysis, which is uh, driven by demand side, not from the supply side planning, but the, then from the demand side. And here we are working with the most representative business associations for each country, how actually can follow on the needs of SMEs and then in the structural dialogue with the relevant ministry, they can make the reallocation and correction of the budget, so how to increase the efficiency of the public money. 
is the five six higher education is mid term. So how you can support the mid term actions in improving the environment, uh, the entrepreneurial environment. And here we are working in line with uh, uh, European Commission guidelines related to the entrepreneurship in non-business studies. And ISCAT 1 and 2, ISCAT 3 are actually uh, important for long-term actions for the society. How in the long term you are creating the friendly environment for entrepreneurs and actually the friendly attitude based on the competences. Women Entrepreneurs is a project supported by the Swedish Development Envelope and here we have nine countries cooperating together. So Moldova join us. I would like to share with you, this is for the first time, that within the Small Business Act, two geographical regions are cooperating together, pre-accession and Eastern Partnership countries. Uh, and this is the experience which now European Commission is building further on that and actually the whole process is going in that direction. Just to share with you, for us, the women entrepreneurs is pure economic issue, just some facts. If you talk about women entrepreneurs, the, the um, ratio um, of women entrepreneurs participating in, in the common economies of our countries are between 8% in one country uh, to the 30%. So we are all going together in the same direction, actually to reach the goal stated for EU member states, which is around more forty uh, percent of representativeness. And actually, the simple sentence of of Cesar Modus Operandi is that actually the entrepreneurs of tomorrow are in our schools today. So if we are not focused nowadays on actions, how we can actually think about the pink future? So these are the instruments developed. They are broadly used, recognized by the Commission. This one is stated already in the Commission as a recommendation for year 28. It's also translated in Russian, and there are uh, some kind of negotiations to be also translated in Arabic for um, meta countries. And you are very welcome to use that because it's, it's publicly available, it's produced from the public money, so it's for the public use. Also, these are our instruments, not just to lose the time on that. And we have results from the first implementation of the training needs analysis for eight countries, as well as for the women entrepreneurs, with the sampling around 2,500 SMEs in eight countries. And also women entrepreneurs, but you can find that on our website. So, in, in numbers. ISCAT 1 and 2, 64 uh, strategic pilot institutions known to the national governments and nominated by them. And actually, um, these institutions have a title of Entrepreneurial School of Southeast Europe. They are all cooperating together and they are also peer visiting each other. Then ISCAT 3, is three secondary schools, um, 32 institutions in eight countries. Again, the same principle known to the government, nominated by them, uh, used as a center of excellence on the national level. Is five, six, 32 higher educational institutions in eight countries cooperating together and uh, sharing the experience. For TNA, eight the most representative business associations. So per each country at the moment we have seven strategic institutions who are cooperating with different ministries in uh, respect of to develop the development programs for on the national level. Or in total, 136 institutions in eight countries and strategically cooperating more than 500 experts in the field. And for us, again, I, I'm going back to the shoes of, of educational expert. For us, the unit of change is not solely teacher, not solely student, but it's a system. So the unit of change is a school, as it is when we talk about SMEs. When we talk about SMEs, the unit of observation in the world of SMEs is a company. No matter if it is a micro, it's small or medium, but the unit of observation is a company and how they are performing in the global market. So for us is entrepreneurial school. Uh, and all of these three elements need to go together. But you can see one element here, parents, and uh, we would like to share with you experience from the eight countries. Uh, you know, again, magic word transition. Also, we experienced the co collapse of uh, our industries in some regions 
and we have in each country we have totally, I will not use the word devastating regions, but we have a regions with a very big problem in development of economies and high unemployment rate. And what we are facing with that actually in these regions, in all of eight countries, the schools become very attractive factor for the parents' uh, population. And you need to be aware the parents' population of ISK2 students are people between 35 and 45 years old. And actually this is the vulnerable part of population and we find out that there is a great role of schools cooperating together with the regional development agencies and um, SME agencies that they can increase this kind of entrepreneurial activity in this population. And I would like to conclude with a very simple sentence. The entrepreneurs of tomorrow are in our schools today. And thank you very much again for inviting us and I'm open for your questions. Now you will hear from the bank.